Alright, here we go. So anyway, welcome friends, neighbors, visitors to our beautiful home here in Livingston County. We're called here to the rim of the Genesee Valley, which means beautiful valley in Iroquois, and holds some of the most fertile farmland in all of New York State. Down it flows the Genesee River from its source just south of us in Potter County, Pennsylvania. Whereas in many other places in Pennsylvania, leaking methane, wells contaminated with heavy metals, barium, strontium, radium, benzene, toluene, formaldehyde, Massive swaths of forest have been bulldozed and laid brown and lifeless for the sake of endless miles of pipeline, connecting countless well pads like gashes in the once peaceful countryside. Now home to toxic waste ponds, roaring compressor stations next to yard upon yard of semi-trucks and triaxles, belching diesel fumes which along with the ever seeping methane create a sweeping advance of smog, systematically invading town by town, community by community, the farms and watersheds and clean air of a place not unlike our own homes here until recently when a few profit-hungry politicians opened the floodgates on the people of Pennsylvania. Now we stand here paused, waiting here for the verdict of, our, those, within the, with, of those within those walls behind us where the town of Avon is being stewed by Lenape Resources over their moratorium on hydraulic fracturing. Whether we can choose the fate of our own communities in the face of the most powerful industry on earth is what we're here today to decide. While at the same time in Albany, our Governor Cuomo stands ready to welcome this industry into our fair state. With open arms as our own Department of Environmental Conservation has so blatantly laid out the red carpet, issuing an incredibly inadequate set of regulations without regards to the ongoing health review and which allow drilling just 50 yards from our schools. All that stands between the behemoth hydraulic fracturing industry and our state is you and me. At a previous rally, I heard the following truth and it has stayed with me every day since. It was pointed out that the Iroquois Confederacy who lived and thrived on this very ground, made the decisions concerning the impact on seven generations into the future. It is with this and the words of Mahatma Gandhi that I carry onward my resistance, and I hope you all will too, to this threat to our livelihood. He said, strength does not come from physical capacity, it comes from an indomitable will. We are now privileged to hear the conviction of some of our fellow citizens about saving the beautiful potential of Livingston County and all of New York State from the paralyzing effects of hydrofracking. Um, first, we're going to have Sandra Frankel from the outgoing supervisor of Brighton after 20 years of service. Among other awards, she has received the 2012 Center for Environmental Initiatives Elizabeth Thorndike Environmental Leadership Award for achievement, or achievements that have improved the quality of the Brighton environment. Sandra was instrumental in banning hydro fracturing in the town of Brighton. A warm good morning to all of you. You know, home rule may not seem like an exciting or sexy topic to most people, but to those of us gathered here today, it is a matter of considerable importance. New York, our state, is described as a home rule state. The powers granted in Article 9 of the Constitution and implemented by the Municipal Home Rule Law give authority to municipalities to act by local law with respect to its property, affairs, or government, and other powers granted in statute, whether or not they relate to its property, affairs, or government. This is a fundamental right of local governments in New York State. Yet despite the protections that the state constitution purports to grant to local governments, local authorities actually have little immunity from state intervention. Home rule in New York State is complex and complicated. On one hand, local laws have the same standing as state laws. 
On the other hand, the state constitution and courts have imposed direct and implied limitations on home rule. This has left many municipalities uncertain about the extent of their powers on certain issues. And as a result, lawsuits like we are seeing today often ensue. And the courts must sort through the facts of a given case and decide whether a local government has the authority to make certain decisions. The state's power to act by general laws is powerful indeed, and court decisions also affect the reach of home rule. Today, right here in this courthouse, the home rule action of the Avon Town Board taken in the interest of protecting the community is in question. As citizens and residents, we want to control the quality and character of the places we call home. And that, and that is achieved in part through local laws, policies, and practices adopted by our local officials. Local officials, as you well know, are elected by the people to represent them. And the people have a right to expect that their interests will be heard and that the policies and practices of their local government will reflect those interests. In an ideal world, town boards build consensus around a shared community vision and translate that vision into reality through tangible local laws, ordinances, and resolutions. However, since we live in communities where not everyone shares the same perspectives or has the same needs and wants, majority votes still carry the day. This is democracy in action and the American way. The town of Avon passed a moratorium in order to study the potential impacts that high volume hydraulic fracturing of natural gas could have on the community and to, de to determine what steps might be necessary to protect the public health safety and general welfare of its citizens through land use regulations, a responsibility that local governments have to its people. The town board voted three to two to impose a hydrofracking moratorium. This became the policy position of the town, but the decision is now really in the hands of the court. The towns of Dryden and Middlefield won legal challenges to their bans on high volume hydraulic fracturing of natural gas. Both were decided in favor of home rule. <laughs> but before you get too excited, know that these two decisions have now been appealed. At the end of 2011, my town board, the, the town of Brighton, adopted a moratorium on hydrofracking and associated activities in order to study the matter thoroughly so that we could ascertain what actions might be necessary to protect public safety and to ensure conformance with local zoning and land use regulations. This past month, the new Brighton Town Board approved a ban on hydrofracking and related activity within the town. As of February 4th of this year, 293 New York municipalities have taken action to adopt a moratorium or ban, as have places across the country and around the globe. High volume hydraulic fracturing, hydrofracking hydro uh, of natural gas from shale promises new jobs, cleaner energy, lower greenhouse gas emissions, and new sources of revenue to support essential public services. And we have that message carried by the gentleman right here on the ground in front of us. <laughs> Mindful of these potential benefits, we must not, we must not sacrifice the fundamentals of our lives, our precious and essential drinking water, the health of our people and animals, and the well-being of our environment and crops. If we become ill from hydrofracking toxins, if we can't drink the water, if polluted water degrades our crops and sickens the animals, then how much have we really gained? 
If our roads deteriorate from intense truck traffic and air quality worsens, if sewer systems and wastewater treatment facilities cannot handle hydrofracking waste, who will pay for repairs, equipment upgrades, and contamination cleanup? The policy of home rule gives local officials elected by the people of their communities the responsibility and obligation to adopt local laws that reflect the interests of the people they serve and to protect the community. The people who live in your community have a right to expect that your local elected representatives will take action to protect the community from current hazards as well as potential future harm. You should expect no less from your local government. Town governments also have the authority to make decisions about land use. Land use is a local prerogative, and our tools include adoption of comprehensive plans, zoning regulations, and land use regulations for the purpose of protecting the public health, safety, and welfare of its citizens, as well as to reflect the desired character of the community. With careful environmental reviews and considered public input, citizens, through their elected officials, decide if and where to permit residential, agricultural, commercial, industrial, and parkland land uses. Brighton, for one, allows light but not heavy industrial land use within its boundaries, and hydrofracking is certainly a heavy industrial use. Let's hope that the court here in Geneseo agrees that the citizens should continue to be able to decide for themselves, through their elected officials, the character and quality of life that they want and that home rule continues to be a defining factor in what it means to live in the great state of New York. This is the essence of the policy of home rule. If you would like more information about home rule and the complexities, I do have um, a website that you might uh, visit uh, to learn more. And I know you're all you're not all writing down what that website is today with freezing hands, but I will leave that information here if you'd like to have it. So here's to home rule. Here's to all of you for being out here supporting local community decisions. God bless you and have a great day. All right, next we're gonna have Cindy Carestio, 30 year resident of Livonia where she has raised her family and owned and operated Walnut Meadow Pet Boarding in Hemlock for the past 13 years. She's committed to her community and takes seriously the job of responsible stewardship for the land, especially the Finger Lakes area. Cindy is also a founding member of Frack Free Genesee and my mother. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Thank you everybody for coming out on this frigid day. Um, I'm not used to doing this. Frack Free Genesee was formed in October of 2011 by a collection of concerned citizens living in the Hemlock Livonia area. The email list alone has grown exponentially since Frack Free Genesee began a little over a year ago starting with 25 emails, coming up to several hundred currently. Frack Free Genesee is only one of hundreds of anti-fracking citizens groups throughout New York State. These are not fringe groups, as some would conveniently like to place us, as in a box labeled activists and environmentalists. We are comprised of a cross-section of the population, which cuts across all social, economic, race, age, educational, religious, and political boundaries. The dire negative consequences of unconventional shale gas extraction know no boundaries and have affected and will continue to touch the lives of all people and ecosystems. Whether those consequences result from water, soil, and air contamination, community fragmentation, and industrialization, economic displacement of sustainable industries that support local economies or simply the psychological 
and emotional stress associated with disenfranchisement. Judging by the stories and news from fracked regions, not only in the U.S., but globally as well, the fracking industry is characterized as an alien invasion, forcing the loss of personal control over one's land, welfare, and community. Fortunately for New Yorkers, we have the legally defensible tool of home rule, which is being debated in the courtroom chambers behind us as I speak. Democracy is both a privilege and a responsibility. As Americans, we are charged with the task of vigilantly upholding the rights and liberties. To their credit, our ancestors fought and sacrificed so that we could enjoy the freedom to live as we choose. These freedoms are threatened by the Goliath gas and oil industry and its powerful financial influence on our governments. It seems that humans tend to wait to act, and to act until a crisis is looming. How much clearer do the signs need to be beyond the truly devastating and heartbreaking personal accounts of loss of health life and land coming from fracked country is the undeniable fact of global climate change. Our leaders, Governor Cuomo and President Obama alike, agree that climate change is real and a number one threat to life on the planet. Fossil fuels contribute to this problem. Natural gas is a fossil fuel extracted using more fossil fuel. Natural gas is methane, 105 times a more potent greenhouse gas than coal over a 20-year period. No-brainer, right? We have alternatives. Tony, Dr. Tony Ingrafia of Cornell University and with physicians, scientists, and engineers for Healthy Energy has presented a feasible, detailed plan for converting New York State to renewable energy by the year 2030. Yes, it will take an amount of sacrifice, commitment, political will, and an overhaul of government policy to achieve this transformation. But what is our alternative? The fact is that the crisis has been knocking at our door for years, and we conveniently go on with our lives, status quo intact. Gone is the luxury of taking for granted the abundance and beauty we enjoy and love. The choice is ultimately a personal one. Do I commit to change for the better and do what it takes, however inconvenient or unfamiliar, to realize that change? Or do I throw up my hands in desperation and resort to giving up? Trust me, I've been there. From all accounts, however, the former is the resounding answer to that question. We are well on our way to positive change. We have appealed to our local governments, our first line of defense and will continue to do so, as well as our state and federal legislators and leaders. Not only has my own town of Livonia zoned out heavy industry, including high-volume hydrofracking, but has begun researching renewable energy. The momentum towards a new paradigm for energy production is approaching critical mass and will press on unfaltering, just as the town of Avon is doing. Facing the very bullies, who serve only to make our grassroots movement more determined and stronger. Thank you. All right, next we're gonna have uh, Jordan Kleeman. Uh, it's a third, or uh, here we go. Associate Professor of History, SUNY Geneseo, is teaching and research focused on modern American history, environmental history, and the, and the history of technology. He is the co-chair of two committees on hydrofracking in the town of Rush, which achieved a moratorium on fracking and continue to study its developments. Yeah. All right, thank you, Jamie, uh, and thanks for, for everybody for coming out on such a cold day. Um, in a certain respect, uh, the reason we're here today is that both the federal government and the New York State government have been unwilling to provide adequate protection from the extraordinary threat that fracking poses to our health, environment, and local economies. The federal government is given what amounts to a, to a blank check to the gas industry by granting broad exemptions from most of the major federal environmental laws, most famously uh, in the form of the Halliburton loophole which is a wholesale exemption from the Safe Drinking, Safe Drinking Water Act. Wow. New York State, meanwhile, has proposed ridiculously lenient regulations on fracking, provided no feasible plan to handle the prodigious amounts of toxic waste generated by shale gas development, 
refused to conduct a comprehensive health impact analysis, refused to assess the cumulative impacts of fracking on the state, relied on, a, on an industry-funded data for its shamefully thin assessment of the economic toll that fracking will take on our communities, among other shortcomings. Moreover, the New York State DEC is charged with the conflicting mandate of both promoting and regulating natural gas development. The head of the DEC's Division of Minerals, Bradley Field, came to the DEC from the gas and oil industry and since arriving there has signed a petition denying the existence of anthropogenic climate change. He's also gone around the state and repeatedly denied that conventional gas drilling in New York State has caused any environmental problems whatsoever, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Given the regulatory vacuum at the federal and state levels, much of the struggle over, the, over fracking in New York State has devolved to the local level. The core, and that's a good thing, I think, in many respects, because it brings good people like you out here and gets you involved. The courts have thus far upheld the well-established right of municipalities to protect themselves using their local zoning powers to ban fracking, and they will likely continue to uphold those, uh, those laws. And that's also a good thing. Yet the gas industry's long, long-standing effort to intimidate local communities into forfeiting their right to protect themselves continues unabated. This was certainly the case in my own community in Rush, New York. Uh, when, the town was, when our town was considering whether or not to pass a moratorium last year, the Albany-based law firm Hinman Straub sent our town board an 85-page memo on behalf of its client, the Independent Oil and Gas Association of New York. This is the leading gas industry trade organization uh, in the state. To be more precise, the memo was sent by the PR division of Hinman Straub, not the legal division, but it was nevertheless printed on the law firm's legal letterhead, uh, which was presumably to send a message to our town that if they enacted the moratorium, it would lead to serious legal consequences and expensive ones. This tactic, we discovered, turned out to be a slightly toned down version of the gas industry's earlier strategy of dealing with towns that resisted fracking. That earlier approach was simply to issue a direct legal threat when it came and, uh, but when it came to, uh, became apparent to the gas industry that such threats were bad publicity, that they would be seen as bullying towns, they developed the, the subtler means of intimidation that we experienced in Rush. Fortunately, our town officials, to their great credit, didn't flinch, and we proceeded to pass the moratorium last year. The latest example of the gas industry attempting to intimidate local communities is unfolding right here in this courthouse. Lenape Resources is attempting to sue the town of Avon for $50 million for enacting a moratorium last summer, even though the town took great pains to grandfather in Lenape's existing wells. Given the attempt of, of uh, Lenape's uh, owner, John Holko, and his attorney, Michael Joy, to put their own particular spin on this case, and the often credulous uh, coverage of that spin uh, by the press, it's important to be clear here about what's actually going on. Mr. Holko and his attorney, Michael Joy, have repeatedly characterized their lawsuit in, this, these are in Michael Joy's words, as an attempt to, quote, save another small business in New York from being forced to close down because of oppressive government regulation, end quote. So I ask you, who is this small businessman named John Holko that the town of Avon is allegedly oppressing? Well, I did a little research on this, and here's what I came up with. After getting his degree in petroleum engineering from Penn State University, his first job out of college was as a senior field engineer for Halliburton. Uh, this was a position he held for four years. Halliburton, for those of you who don't know, is one of the largest oil field services corporations in the world. He then, Holko went, then went on to work for KCS Energy, Lenape Resources' parent company, and in 1995 executed a management buyout of Lenape, becoming its owner and president. And since that time, Lenape has become one of the, uh, one of the larger independent gas producers in New York State. 
It currently operates around 500 wells in both Pennsylvania and New York. It owns the drilling rights on around 100,000 acres in more than a dozen New York State towns, and its annual revenues are over a million dollars. In the midst of all, of all that, uh, Mr. Holko served as president of the Independent Oil and Gas Association of New York State for eight years. Currently, he serves as its secretary. The, uh, the IOGA, or the Independent Oil Gas Association, uh, is the same organization that, uh, who, whose PR firm essentially sent us our 85-page memo. Its board of directors includes representatives from some of the most powerful fuel, fossil fuel corporations in the world. Shell Oil, XTO, which is a subsidiary of Exxon, which, was, which Exxon bought for $31 billion in 2010. Chesapeake Energy, Norse Energy, this is who sits on their board. So, he's a small businessman in, in, in some other fantasy world, I guess. In short, this is decidedly not a case of small business being pushed around by regulators. Rather, it's a case of the most powerful industry in the world attempting to push around a small town and intimidate similar communities throughout the state in doing so. So my message to you is, in your small communities, keep, your, keep, keep the steel in your spine. Do not back down from this industry. You can do it. The, the law is on your side. Thank you. Alright, keep it rolling here. Uh, Ted Barnett would like to say some words. He's a local physician uh, living in Rochester. So I know everybody's freezing and thank you all for being here. I'm not as tall as Jordan. Thank you, Jordan, so much. Jordan is a, uh, one of my fellow Russians. We both live in Russia and he's really been leading our, our cause. Uh, I really don't have a, I don't want to say a whole lot because we're all freezing, so I can, that's good, that's fine. I think they can hear me. I can just yell. So anyway, I just want to point out to everybody that they're, get, they're get, all getting paid to be in there and be nice and warm. And out, out here, we're all volunteers. So remember that. We are all volunteers. Nobody here gets paid for what they do. And we should be very proud of that. And I'm very proud of all of you for being here. So thank you very much. All right, now we're gonna have uh, Mr. Tim Stoltman, who is a third generation dairy farmer in Canisius, having practiced natural farming methods for some time. He finally registered the farm as organic in 2006, listening to his passion for slowing down the pace and connecting with the land and its maker. He loves farming and with his workhorses. Some of Tim's goals include moving towards more sustainable farming methods and reducing and eliminating the reliance on fossil fuels. Yeah, I'm Tim Stolman. I live in Kinesis. Uh, our farm has been certified organic for about six years now. What's that? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm not used to these fancy things here. Um, the number of farms in New York has shrunk tremendously in the last 20 years. And why risk our losing our ability to grow our own food for the dangerous practice of hydrofracking? I'm looking at this from a farmer's perspective. Uh, soil contamination from spills and leaks of frac fluid, radio radioactive contamination from radium-226, uranium, radon, and other radioactive decay products may be prevalent in the air, soils, and water, and taken up in plants and eventually eaten by animals or humans. Heavy metals like strontium, arsenic, barium, cadmium, chromium, lead, and mercury are found in drilling waste and enter the food chain. Uh, soil erosion, farmland fragmentation from drill pads and access roads, water usage, uh, frack water leaves a hydrologic cycle forever, uh, ground level ozone from methane impacts crop yields such as alfalfa, clover, uh, grapes and other grasses. Losing these crops would have a tremendous uh, effect on the farming community in New York. Failing reproductive rates, 40% of fracking chemicals are known endocrine disruptors, causing abortions, fetal death, and irregular heat cycles in animals or humans, and has been found in the blood and urine of livestock and humans living near fracking sites. Livestock poisonings and death from frac, frac fluid because of saltiness of fluid, uh, cattle and other animals are attracted to that. 
uh, toxic compounds throughout the food chain. They bioaccumulate in plants and animals that are then consumed by humans. And no long-term studies done on food grown near fracking sites. No food safety inspections done on food grown near fracking sites. Uh, my far our farm has been in my family for about 90 years and we we'd like to keep it that way. Uh, I have two little boys that would I would hope would be interested in, in farming and continuing it. Uh, and the long-term effects of fracking outweigh the short-term games. I, I think we ought to have a band in New York State. That's my opinion. All right, next. I finished this. I think this will be our last one. We can get uh, get moving, do a little call and response, and make our make our limbs come back to life maybe uh we have uh, rachel Treichler is a uh, attorney from in stupend county she lives in the town of urbana in cuca lake watershed she's worked with a number of activists on issues involving and enacting local laws addressing gas drilling and water issues and is currently representing several environmental groups challenging the bulk water sales by the village of painted post to a gas drilling company in pennsylvania We're here today on this cold, uh, cold, windy spot to support the town of Avon uh, and the actions that the town board has taken in protecting its citizens. Uh, it's an honor to be here in Livingston County, which as far as I know is the county with the greatest number of local laws and moratoriums. Uh, in the state. So, uh, congratulations Livingston County. You are an inspiration to us in Steuben County. Uh, I've been working with my town of Urbana and we're trying to get towns in the Cuca Lake watershed. Uh, many of the towns around the lake have done bans and moratoria. I know here in Livingston County you have a number of beautiful lakes in the Genesee River. Um, Having reviewed the cases, as, as many of the previous speakers said, uh, we do have strong laws in New York giving uh, rights to local governments to make decisions. And we citizens have to stand up for those laws and make sure that they are enforced. That's what we're doing here today. Um, they, particularly for zoning, uh, it seems very clear from previous decisions that towns do have the right to zone out uh, industries that they don't think are beneficial to the town. And um, so I, I also wanted to speak about issues, even if we are successful in banning hydrofracking in New York, which I hope we, we will be, we still have the issues of the waste from the other places where hydrofracking is going on. In Steuben County, we are on the Pennsylvania border. We have um, drill cuttings and other, other fluids from the gas drilling coming into our area landfills and, and eventually discharging into our area rivers. I know here in Livingston County, you have some pipelines, you have some injection wells. Um, we all, and uh, wastewater treatment plants, we all have waste issues as well uh, to address and to consider with our local laws. So I won't, uh, I won't talk too long here as we're all getting cold, but uh, thanks to everyone for being here. <laughs> All right, uh, next we have uh, Zora Gussow. She's going to lead you in a call and response, and we, we can jump up and down while we're doing the call and response. Hi, okay. I'm really short. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming out. Really appreciate it. I know it's cold, but, uh, you know, this is worth it. There's uh, hundreds more people outside in Albany right now rallying while the commissioner of the Depar Department of Environmental Conservation is testifying. Uh, you know, we're talking about citizens, people in local areas making their own decisions about um, what they want happening with their environment, with their water, with their land. We need a democratic process for this. We haven't seen that on the local level with these gas companies trying to come in and bully us. We haven't seen it on the state level with a process that hasn't put nearly enough emphasis on the local and on the public comments uh, and the facts about 
fracking and how dangerous it is and how bad for our land, our water, and our economy that it is. So we've got a big fight ahead of us, but you know, there is an end in sight. There could be, you know, there's a lot of actions coming up in the next month that will decide a lot of things about what's going to happen in New York State with fracking. And uh, so many, many people, uh, over 6,000 people now have taken a pledge that no matter what, they will be out, they will be protesting, they will be doing whatever it takes to keep fracking out of New York State. It's what we need to do. They, <laughs> we will take any step necessary. So with that, I'd like to uh, recite this pledge uh, of resistance that thousands of New Yorkers have already committed to. Uh, and if you all would like, I'd like you to repeat after me and take this pledge with me so that we know that there's, what, 60 people here. Um, you know, each one of us has friends. Each one of us has communities to go back to and say, I took this pledge. I want you to take this pledge. And we're going to stand up and we're going to defend our water and defend our land and defend our state from greedy gas companies. <laughs> I'll do this like Occupy Call and Answer style. I believe, I believe that high volume, that high volume horizontal, hydraulic fracking, horizontal hydraulic fracking is an accident prone, is an accident prone, inherently dangerous, inherently dangerous industrial product process, <laughs> industrial process with risks that include, with risks that include catastrophic and irremediable. Catastrophic and irremediable environmental damage. Environmental damage. That these risks cannot be properly resolved. That these risks cannot be properly resolved. Nor can they be, be mitigated through regulation. Nor can they be mitigated through regulation. Be regulation. By any government agency. By any government agency. Let alone. Let alone. One that has colluded with the gas industry. One that has colluded with the gas industry. Over the last four years, over the last four years, in creating rules that attempt to regulate fracking, in creating rules that attempt to regulate fracking, that Governor Cuomo and this agency, that Governor Cuomo and this agency, the Department of Environmental Conservation, the Department of Environmental Conservation, have repeatedly turned a deaf ear, have repeatedly turned a deaf ear to the petitions of New York scientists. Economists, medical professionals, medical professionals, and ordinary citizens, and ordinary citizens who have tried again and again, tried again and again for four years, for four years, and to little avail, to little avail, to alert the agency and Governor Cuomo, to alert the agency and Governor Cuomo to the many dangers, to the many dangers that hydraulic fracturing. Poses. The hydraulic fracturing poses to our health, to our health, safety, safety, property values, property values, peace of mind, peace of mind, and to the climate itself, and to the climate itself, that it is wrong to shatter, that it is wrong to shatter the bedrock of New York State, the bedrock of New York State, and inject it with toxic chemicals, and inject it with toxic chemicals. Hence, if Governor Cuomo permits, hence, if Governor Cuomo permits, high volume horizontal hydraulic fracturing, high volume horizontal fracturing, in any part of New York State, in any part of New York State, I pledge to join with others, I pledge to join with others, to engage in nonviolent acts of protest, to engage in nonviolent active protest, including demonstrations, Including demonstrations and any other actions, any other actions, as my conscience leads me, as my conscience leads me, I make this pledge, I make this pledge, in order to prevent the destruction and poisoning, in order to prevent the destruction and poisoning of New York's water, of New York's water, of New York's air, of New York's air, our food system, our food system, on which life, on which life, health. health and economic prosperity all depend. On economic prosperity all depend. Including that of our future generations. Including that of our future generations. Ban fracking now! Ban fracking now! Alright. Good job.
All right. Thank everybody for coming. I feel like everybody's probably real cold. We have this building behind this church open. Um, there's a number of uh, restaurants and a coffee shop right down this sidewalk on Main Street. Um, I know that Channel 13 is going to be doing live coverage at 12. So if anybody wants to stick around and be present for some interviews behind, that would be great. Um, but anyway, thanks for everybody for coming out. Band fracking now! <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, go. I made up uh, new words to some of the old uh, civil rights songs that I used to sing at demonstrations. So here's an easy one: Keep New York frack free, we shall not be moved. Keep New York frack free, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger lake between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. Protect our air and water, we shall not be moved. Protect our air and water, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger, like between the hillsides, we will not be moved. No toxic spills or accidents, we shall not be moved. No toxic spills or accidents, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger, like between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. Keep the gas underground, we shall not be moved. Keep the gas underground, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger, like between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. No pipelines through our land, we shall not be moved. No pipelines in our land, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger, like between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. Support the band, we shall not be moved. Support the fracking band, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger, like between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. Protect our local farms, we shall not be moved. Protect our local farms, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger length between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. Protect all the wineries, we shall not be moved. Protect all the wineries, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger length between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. No heavy truck traffic, we shall not be moved. No heavy truck traffic, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger lake between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. Protect our peace and quiet, we shall not be moved. Protect our peace and quiet, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger lake between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a finger lake between the hillsides, we shall not be moved. So you can make a lot more verses too. <laughs>